All right, so we got some news regarding the upcoming third Spider-Man movie with Tom Holland. In case you haven't heard, Jamie Foxx is going to be in it once again as Electro. And not only that, but just today we got news that Doctor Strange is going to be in it, which is leading many, many people to believe that this third Spider-Man movie is going to introduce a live-action Spider-Verse. You know, with Jamie Foxx being a different version of Electro that's not blue, and Doctor Strange bringing his multiverse of madness with him, Spider-Verse is looking more and more likely. So I figured now is good a time as any to talk about the Taz movies. Because I was gonna have to make videos on them eventually. It's like the Tasm movies and the Dark Knight trilogy. I still need to make videos on those. But for now, let's talk about Andrew Garfield's romp as Spider-Man. <laughs> The Amazing Spider-Man. So The Amazing Spider-Man was the reboot of the Spider-Man movie franchise. It came out back in summer of 2012, so around the time the first Avengers movie came out. And I remember I was keeping up on this movie, man. Originally, this movie was going to be Spider-Man 4 with Tobey Maguire. And to my knowledge, it was going to have the Lizard and Carnage as the main villains. As a kid in middle school, I was really looking forward to that. So when it fell through and it just never happened, I was disappointed. And when I heard there was going to be a reboot, I was like, I don't know. And now, many years later, honestly speaking, unpopular opinion coming at you. I actually like the second Amazing Spider-Man movie more than the first one. Because honestly, I'm actually not the biggest fan of this Spider-Man movie in particular. I remember walking out of this movie for the first time and being like, eh, it was alright. So in The Amazing Spider-Man, we have Andrew Garfield as Peter Parker. And his Peter Parker, I like. I mean, there are some things I don't like about him. He sure stutters a lot. Which is fine at first, you know, he's supposed to be socially awkward. But the stuttering does get old fast. And plus the fact that he does look like he's in his late 20s. As does every other high school schooler in this movie, which is one thing they fixed with Tom Holland, who still looks like 15. And this movie covers the origin story of how Peter Parker becomes Spider-Man. And I will say, it does it pretty well. I know at this point in mainstream media, we're all tired of the Spider-Man origin story, which is why the past few big Spider-Man stories we got, the new Spider-Man movies, the Spider-Man game for the PS4, they don't cover the origin story because we all know it, we've seen it before. But when I sat down and watched this movie yesterday, I was like, you know what? Spider-Man's origin story is really good. It's, it's good to see it again. Honestly speaking, Spider-Man does have a great origin story. Probably one of the best in all of superheroes. It's like right up there with Batman's. A radioactive spider bites him. He learns a hard lesson about with great power comes great responsibility from his Uncle Ben. And he learns that lesson the hard way after Uncle Ben gets shot. That's actually done pretty well in this movie. It is kind of rushed through, I'll say that. Because there's a lot of stuff this movie has to cover. Peter Parker deals with a few things in this movie. The Tassin movies deal with Peter Parker's parents a lot, which the Sam Raimi movies never touch. On. So these new Mark Webb directed movies brought something new to the table with the Peter Parker's parents storyline. And honestly speaking, I never cared for that. Like when the first trailers were coming out for this movie and it showed Peter Parker's parents are a big deal to him, I was like, I don't care about that at all. And I still don't. I get that in some of the comics, Peter Parker's parents have a big storyline, but I probably wouldn't care for it there either. I don't know what it is. I think Spider-Man just has better things to deal with. Getting back to his origin story, he doesn't really become Spider-Man in the suit until like an hour into the movie. But I found myself actually really enjoying that first hour. I am not gonna lie. Because again, I really like the origin story of Spider-Man. Although Cliff Robertson was a way better Uncle Ben than Martin Sheen was. But when Andrew Garfield finally suits up in Spider-Man, when he is Spider-Man, he's pretty good. Although I never liked that suit. The suit in this movie... I just, I do not like the design at all. It looks all raggedy and run down. It looks punk, like a punk version of the Spider-Man suit. And the eye pieces are not white. They're like tinted or something. Eh, just, I don't like that look for Spider-Man. But on the other side of that coin, the attitude that he has when he's Spider-Man is on point. He is really funny when he's thrown down with bad guys. And I, I did miss that. Tom Holland is not really that funny when he's dealing with bad guys when he's Spider-Man. So you have that scene in this movie where he's messing with the car thief. He's webbing him up to the wall and he's like, achoo, and he sneezes and the web comes out. It's hilarious. Hilarious. I love that scene. He's like, zoom, zoom, zoom. Oh, it's so simple, you know? And it does make sense. He gets a big boost of confidence with this newfound strength. You know, mild-mannered Peter Parker, who's always stuttering. All of a sudden, he has super strength and reflexes. He's gonna get a boost of confidence. And he's gonna show that by being a sarcastic asshole when taking down bad guys. It's fun to watch, yeah. And I also like the fact that this movie feels like he's just a guy who's... He's a vigilante. This movie's not dealing with a bigger comic book universe with multiverses and all that. It's just New York City, and Peter Parker becomes a vigilante known as Spider-Man, and the police department is going after him. That's actually a big part of this movie. The police captain, George Stacy, played by Dennis Leary, he issues an arrest warrant for Spider-Man because he's just this guy going out there in a unitard beating up bad guys without any real right to do so, you know? It felt real. I felt like that's what would really happen if someone went out there in our real world, put on a costume, and started beating up goons. So, all right, I'll give the movie that too. Damn. 
I'm actually giving this movie quite a bit of praise, aren't I? Peter Parker's main love interest in this movie is Gwen Stacy, who's played by Emma Stone, who again, looks like she's in her late 20s. And she's fine and functional in the movie as the love interest. In fact, their chemistry is really good because we all know that Andrew Garfield and Emma Stone actually did start dating during production of this movie. So their on-screen chemistry in this movie is of course going to be completely real. And what can I say? It really works. It's really cute. They do make a cute couple, admittedly. I mean, I don't hate this movie completely. There are some things I like about it, as I've listed. It's just compared to other Spider-Man, Man movies, this is one of my least favorites. And now we get to some of the things I really don't like about this movie. First of all, the villain. The villain in The Amazing Spider-Man is Dr. Curtis Connors, played by Reese Iffens, who becomes the Lizard. So I guess that's one thing they kept from the original concept for Spider-Man 4, because the Lizard was going to be in that movie, so they made the Lizard the villain in this movie, in this reboot. Too bad he's, you know, generic as fuck. Kurt Connors in this movie is always talking about, oh, human evolution because humans are weak, feeble-minded creatures, they need to be evolved. I'm like, this is the most generic bullshit a villain can spout out. So he wants to take this Oscorp formula, which Oscorp is a big deal in this movie. In fact, Oscorp is like the one thing missing from the Tom Holland movies. So Kurt Connors, who's a scientist for Oscorp, he has a missing limb. He injects himself with lizard DNA because lizards can regenerate limbs. And sure enough, he grows a limb back, but then he becomes this big, giant, maniacal lizard monster and starts rampaging the city. And so he's like, oh, this is the next step in human evolution. So he wants to take this Oscorp formula and expose it to the city, turning everyone into lizard people, which is kind of dumb sounding now that I say it out loud. I mean, the lizard is a cool villain, you know? He's a big lizard man. How was that not awesome? But they just wasted the character of Kurt Connors in this movie. And the design of the lizard. I mean, come on, that's the best they could do? In the comics, the lizard looks awesome because he has a snout. He looks like a big crocodile man. I mean, just look at this. How awesome does that look? Giant crocodile man in a ripped lab coat? That's terrifying. In this movie, he has no snout, so he looks very weird. Like a way less cool version of Killer Croc. So yeah, the villain, the lizard, is a big minus for this movie. My other big minus for this movie is the score. The score for this movie was written by the late James Horner. And look, I hate to speak ill of the dead here. I really do. But I never liked the score for this movie because the main theme he wrote for this movie, I just, I do not like it. It does not sound like a Spider-Man score. And call me picky here, but Spider-Man scores are, they're supposed to have a certain vibe to it. And at first, maybe I just didn't like it because it wasn't Danny Elfman's score. And Danny Elfman's Spider-Man theme is one of the best, if not the best. So this theme was just not that, and how dare they? But now, nah, looking back, comparing it to all the other Spider-Man themes that have come out since then, Hans Zimmer's score, Michael Giacchino's score, James Horner's Spider-Man theme is still my least favorite. It sounds like a superhero theme, sure, it just doesn't sound Spider-Man-ish. At least not in my opinion. So in the end, The Amazing Spider-Man, it does have some things that deserve praise for sure. I like Andrew Garfield as Peter Parker and Spider-Man. I like his relationship with Gwen Stacy. It's very cute. I like the action, you know, when Spider-Man's throwing down, it's entertaining. Although the visual effects, the CGI is not that good in this movie at all. They could have used a lot of cleaning up. The villain was completely wasted. The score didn't sound like Spider-Man at all. And really my biggest problem with the movie is the design of a lot of things. I don't like the design of Spidey's suit. I don't like the design of the lizard. But hey, that's that's just my opinion. I did really like the origin story in this one though. I felt it was told pretty well. So this movie's got some give and take. It's not completely terrible. It's better than Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man 3. Not that that's saying much, but you know. So The Amazing Spider-Man. Have you seen it? Have you watched it recently? And how does it compare to all the other Spider-Man movies for you? Whatever you think, go ahead and leave a comment. And don't forget to subscribe.